it baffles me how many people think that they're bigger than they actually are. I hear people say like, well how do I get in the New York Times or, or how do I get that meeting with that CEO? And I, oftentimes I just say one is better than zero. The steps it takes to actually get to the biggest places in the world. Before you get a meeting with you know, Zucks or, or Cuban or Barry Diller or whoever you're trying to have a meeting with in the business world, well you've gotta have a lot of little meetings to, to build up your cadence. People are always like, man, you've been on Conan and, and Ellen and, and the Today Show and CNN and Fox. Like, how do I get that? And I'm like, well, I also did a thousand interviews, it feels like, on videos that got one or 19 or 137 views. Like my PR people and all my managers and handlers are really pissed at me because they're like, why are you spending 15 minutes doing these blogs that have six readers you know, every single day and you're passing on the stuff that we're giving you to be on CNN or New York Times? I still, even today, am as happy and sometimes even more excited to be on a podcast or a video blog that's only gonna reach 100 people because I'm always about depth versus width. Do you wanna go wide or do you wanna go deep? I want to go deeper with my community. I want to give back to people that were fans of me. And so even today, where I have more leverage than I did three or four or five or six years ago to get bigger platforms, I still live under the motto of one is better than zero. To me, doing these interviews is a process of the work that so many people are impatient and not willing to do. Are you willing to take 10 minutes to get 195 views? I am. I don't know who you think you are. You've not gotten the exposure yet. When you have not made your name just yet. When you're still making the climb. When you're not paying attention, because nobody else is, because 217 people are watching the video, I'm grinding when you're sleeping. I did those 87s and 59s and 137s and 813 views day in and day out, day in and day out, day in and day out, and continue to. You might make a video on somebody's video show that has 89 viewers, but one of those 89 viewers may be a producer at CNN or, or might be the CFO of a big company that you're trying to reach. And so undervaluing just that one view it needs to be the right view, but it's one view is a humongous mistake. It's about having the humility. It's about not saying no, even when you've made it. And the one is greater than zero concept is something I'm proud that I continue to execute on. So at 30, I started Wine Library TV. YouTube blows up. At 31, I'm on Conan O'Brien, Ellen. There's articles being written about me. Now they're writing that the business grew from three to $60 million in sales. I'm becoming this guy. I got so many goddamn emails from friends in high school during that period when I was showing up in all these magazines and TV shows. And every single one of them was like, hey Gary, you remember me from high school? Oh my God, you're so lucky. I wrote back every single one of them and said, let me just clarify one thing. I'm not lucky. I worked. I worked every goddamn weekend and every holiday since I was 14 years old. So you can keep that luck shit in your pocket. Every day, every day that I live my life, I get five to 27 emails from people that are telling me that they sh- are quitting or they should quit or, or are really coming to me as a last resort to uh, convince them not to quit, I think, a lot of times, or, or, or maybe give them confirmation that they should quit. Uh, you know, hey Gary, uh, this is Sally. I've been doing my blog now for nine months and I'm not getting the results that I like to see or that I was promised or that you and you endo, uh, should I give up? Like, you know, should I, is my, is my content not good enough? Am I, is my voice not good enough? And, and I think about it, Every time, every time I see these emails, every time people ask me at conferences, I think about it. I think about how sad I am that I wasn't documenting my life or putting out content or doing the Ask Gary Vee show during those five and a half years of Wine Library TV. Especially those 18 months when nobody was watching. You know, the story that's never told is the story that I was building Wine Library to a huge company long before Wine Library TV and that the first month that I did Wine Library TV was the first time that Wine Library had not grown 30% over the prior year's revenue. 
So not only did I have the patience to let it play itself out and win, it was a scenario where I was actually losing money by being patient. Many of the people that are gonna watch this video are not achieving what they want and are lacking the patience and think everything happens overnight and that is coming at the cost of an unhappy life or no loss financially, just loss in time. Just coming at the expense of Angry Birds or House of Cards marathons or the bowling team or hanging out with friends and having a beer or reading a magazine or whatever the hell gets you off and excited as a hobby. It's coming at that expense. It's not coming at the expense of actual money or something or pain uh, or you know, it's coming at the expense of a luxury. And so to me, the, the, the insanity, really, and that's what I'm gonna, um, you know, the, the disproportional misunderstanding that there's not a person that you can name, not one. There is zero people that you can name that had it happen overnight. Even the nine-year-old Stevie Wonder and six-year-old Michael Jackson, there were years of work put in prior by their parents, by their uncles, even with the greatest talents, even with LeBron. He seemed like so young when he hit the scene. Guess what? He wasn't. He'd already been playing basketball for 15 goddamn years. <laughs> even though you all say to me like, wow, you, you did it. I didn't do it. I did it when I was 14 years old, and 15 years old, and 16 years old, and 17 years old, and 18 years old, and 19 years old, and 20 years old, and 21 years old, and 22 years old, which were all the years that every single weekend, while my friends went to the Jersey Shore and hooked up with girls, while my friends went fishing, while my friends hung out and threw around the football and lived the leisure life, every weekend, every, every single weekend, let me just say it one more time, every weekend, Every day, from the day I got out of school to the day I went back into school, every vacation day, all of them, not a good amount of them, every day from 7 a.m. to back then 8 p.m., every day I was learning the wine business. I was honing my craft to be a good salesman. I was figuring out how to be an operator. I watched how my dad interacted with his employees, what I liked about it, what I didn't. I watched my cousin Bobby interact with the employees. I took what I liked from it, what I didn't. I was 30 years old before any of you ever saw me. Go show me the videos on YouTube right now that have me under 30. They don't exist. I was putting in the work for half my life at from 15 to 30 where I built an actual business. I put in actual work. And so if you wanna tell me that every goddamn moment of my life between 15 and 30 is an overnight success, then knock yourself out. But that is complete bullshit and every one of you know it. And so when you email me that you've started this thing, that you have the audacity to want it to be the rest of your life, the audacity, the, really the, the entitlement that you think that you should be able to do something that you love so much for the rest of your life, that makes you enough money to be able to do it for the rest of your life, that you're giving up after four months, <laughs> that you're giving up after two years. As a matter of fact, every single person watching this video should be trying for that moment for the rest of their life, period. You might hit pay dirt at 80 and cool, then you can really do exactly what you love from 80 to 100. My friends, it is a gift. It is a gift to wake up in the morning and be able to do what you want for the rest of your life. The way you do that is by becoming a quote unquote overnight success. You know, the excuse that everybody uses to deploy against somebody who's actually put in work for the last decade and got themselves into a position where they can do something pretty rad that we all think is cool and we all wish we could do. You know, that thing, the thing that you say to yourself to make yourself feel better about when you're laying in bed and playing a goddamn game on your phone instead of putting in the work to achieve what you want. Nothing in life is free. Nothing happens overnight. It all takes tons and tons of work and tons and tons of talent and tons and tons of serendipity. But my friends, luck, serendipity, there's a forced culture within that. <laughs> you know, you don't just sit in your room hoping and then something lucky happens. Nobody just knocks on your house's door and says, congratulations, you've been awarded this. Luck comes from being in the right spot. I've been really lucky because I fucking bleed out of my eyes every day of my life and work my face off. 
get really lucky when you have that 11.30 p.m. meeting <laughs> where the lucky thing happened. Pretty cool, since all you were fucking sleeping. I was pretty lucky, weird, that I scheduled that meeting because I did a ton of things for 30 years that allowed me to even have that meeting in the first place, that gave me the leverage to have that lucky thing to happen. There's no overnight successes, period. They don't exist, show me. Leave a comment on YouTube, leave the name, explain to me, tell me, show me, let me know. Show me the overnight success because I'll show you you justifying in your brain something that is just not true, period. I think you have to fight. And I very much think that my success is a product of some level of skill, but I do think I win because I outwork people. I really do believe that. I do believe that 100%. And I'm not sure that if my dad didn't set that example that I'd even have the ability to think one could work that hard. The fact that I've been working 19 hours a day, every day for the last 20 years is easy for me. It's the only gear I knew, right? I was poor, I sucked shit at school. It was the only gear I had. You know, I think you need to recognize that, um, that your biggest advantage is that you're hungrier than your competitor. And that if you're not applying your one advantage, which is your work ethic and the hours that you have to put into your business, well then you're gonna come up short. I sit here with enormous assumptions around all of you that you're just too soft to beat me, right? That I think that you've had it better and that that alone doesn't allow you to beat me. Somebody will come with a counter-cultural point of view and be like, Gary, that's cool, but I don't have to work that hard because I'm working smarter. Yeah, me too, asshole. I work hard and smart. Now what? Look, there's a 12-hour, 10-hour, 8-hour, 15-hour work day. You can finish a lot of things in those 18, 12, 9 hours, or you can finish medium amounts of things or lightweight things. People focus on too many small details. Way too many people in this room are gonna spend the next 30, 40 years of their lives trying to check the boxes of the things that they're not as good at and that you're gonna waste a fuckload of time and lose. I highly recommend for all you hustlers, because there's a lot of you, there's a lot of you that are always talking about, Gary, I do work hard, and you do. You work for 16 hours. Some people just don't have the attention span or the capacity to remember. Or like, there's a lot of things I can't learn. I was a very poor student because the subject matter bored me. And if I was forced to become great at understanding the great artists of the 20th century, I'm in big trouble. And so I would tell people to bet on their strengths. You need to bet on your strengths and don't give a fuck about what you suck at and to put themselves in a position to win with their strengths because that is absolutely the straightest line to success. Greatness comes from adversity and, and looking the, the challenge in the eye and having the intestinal fortitude to kind of uh, to, to, to step up and, and go after it. First of all, it's different for everybody. But this whole notion of like, where's the time? I, I'm just, I just think people are loaded with excuses. I think that the Vayner Nation thinks they're hustling and straight to your face, I think 99.9% .9 of you are not. Everybody has time. Stop watching fucking Lost. The thought and nature of like people saying, well, America's an entrepreneurial paradise is the same conversation that's happening within America of like, to be great in tech, you need to be in San Francisco. And let me just remind everybody that Facebook was invented in Boston. I'm just worried that people don't have patience. There's so many people giving up. I, I think the fear of losing trumps the excitement of victory for so many people. So to me, hustle would be putting all your effort into achieving the goal at hand. And for me, that means making every minute count. So look, you need a break, good, get your break. But the bottom line is, every minute that you can apply to your game, you need to. I worry that people don't tap into their strengths. I think that people like to claim that they work hard and smart, but they're not putting in the work, and they work nine to six. It's just not enough. Executing the way it always is, following the school business model, 
you such poor shit, it's gonna lead you to a place where you're not going to win. Your talent isn't enough. You've gotta go put in the work. And having thick skin. Do you know how obnoxiously thick my skin is? You can punch me in the face 8,000 times. I'm here to get punched. Whether you're 100 or zero, you want to zen and live in a mountain with no technology, or you want to buy the jets and hustle your face off, or anything in between, you need to find your cadence. There is no reason to do shit you hate. None. Promise me you won't. Whatever you need to do, do it. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what do I want to do every day for the rest of my life? Do that. And then hustle your face off 15 hours a day to get people to care. You know what I hustle about? I hustle about meeting every single person on earth. Do you know why? Because I care about people more than I care about myself. You're spending an hour or two on things every day that aren't achieving this extra brand or extra monies that you're chasing. And that's what you need to do. You need to work so hard. Your talent isn't enough. You've gotta go put in the work. And and the fact of the matter is, we're in a time and in a generation that's not willing to do that. Do I have angst? Sure. I'm calling out myself every day for the last six or seven years telling everybody I'm gonna buy the Jets. I gotta roll Billy's deep. I mean, if you want this, if you want bling bling, if you wanna buy the Jets, if you wanna do shit, work. That's how you get it. Hustle is putting it all on the line. Period, simple, you don't like the way it sounds? Fuck it, because it's the truth, because you're just not working. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all into the parenting of your children, the building of your businesses, the philanthropy that you wanted to do. Whatever you define, it's just you know, all in, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy and in execution. Hustle is a word to so many people, even to some of my hardcore fans. I'm sorry to call you out, but I follow you like you follow me and people talk about the hustle, but then you're talking about your six o'clock, you know, happy hour drink or your video game or this and that. And here we are in the holidays and everybody's going to their holiday party and I've got one meeting coming up right now, two meetings after that, reviewing all my email, And so while everybody's drinking some goddamn eggnog, I continue the hustle. And so you can say it or you can do it, but I highly recommend you do both. Stop crying and just keep hustling. Hustle is the most important word ever.